tired to now after you bring me my dinner tonight? Not a no. No, not no. You don't look so good, Mom. <laughs> All right, all right, party people in the place to be, vandals and horror fans. We are back with a brand new episode of Buzz Bites, and uh, we're kind of doing like an up to date, like relevant episode to this week. We're actually going to be talking about films that are, you know, new, and that, that's pretty yeah. new. We're going to be talking about Evil Dead Rise, which um, should be a lot of fun. I guess we're going to have some pretty good opinions about that coming up, um, and then after that, we're going to talk about. Renfield, which um, I guess we're going to have some pretty good opinions on too, according to Miss L. So, but before we get into that, uh, do you guys have a check in? Anything you guys kind of want to shout out that you've read or like watched or listened to or anything? Mm. I've continued with the Wu Tang. Uh, I'm almost done the second season. They're almost a group now, so yeah. It's pretty slow moving, actually, when it comes to the actual clan itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clans usually take their time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Oh, I started watching Sisu, but I didn't finish it. I just watched the first, the first little bit. It's pretty good. Not bad. Some pretty good scenes in that. And uh, oh, Ted Lasso. We only. I think there's just one episode left. So we caught up on mm. Ted Lasso. Yeah, I know, uh, Cookie. You must have watched Succession, now. Yes, I did. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna convert you. I'm, I'm yeah. Well, I've watched the first three mine. seasons. So they is the show going. over, or um, is, is it's, this just it's, the season finale? It's done. No, it's over. That's it. Okay, that's what Fucking I was thinking. Five people stay. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Fantastic ending. Um, 12 out of 10. Yes. Here for the drama, here for the mm -hmm. theatric, the tragedy of it all. It was chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. Well, did it end in a plane crash with everyone dying? Yes. Twice. Yes. <laughs> wow. I'll, give that a, they I'll, pulled... give that a, I'll give that a 12 on 10 then. If not, it's a zero. Yeah. Surprisingly, what's his name? Sully Sullenberg was on board and he managed to pull it out one time. And then it crashed again, and I was like, Sully. Um, oh, but yeah, two. He's losing his touch. Yeah, he's losing. He's like three. This is the third time I'm tired. I, I can't keep doing this, y'all. <laughs> did, uh, did Jerry and what's his name? The Macaulay Culkin character. Uh, Roman. Roman, Jeremy did they get are. did they get married in it? Yeah, they had three babies. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. The birth scene was a little much, but... Um, yeah, I could have done without it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially Dude. Kendall biting the umbilical cord was <laughs> <laughs> a bit much. It would have been oh. awesome if one of them just lost it and just like just killed everybody. Oh, <laughs> that'd have been a good ending. He said uh, dysfunction. You like you just took it to another mm -hmm. level. Well, Kendall. I mean, poor guy. Poor guy, get out of here. I'm out. I'm out. I'm about to log out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was named Kendall. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have a chance. Fair enough. That's, that's pretty poor that, guy. Like, he the biggest disappointment to the family. <laughs> but I'm the eldest boy. <laughs> <laughs> the eldest boy. <laughs> My favorite post show revelation was that. Um, uh, Roman's shirt was actually from Walmart kids section <laughs> that he was wearing um, at his mom's house. Yeah, it's like you could buy it at Walmart <laughs> in the boys section. I could I could see that. Oh my, he's so tiny and frail <laughs> and racist. But <laughs> yeah, well, you know. That aside, though, he's a sweet angel. <laughs> 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 A sweet racist angel. A sweet racist angel. I can't wait till so, we do our episode on that, man. I want to see Joe get torn apart. Mm -hmm. like, that's going to be a lot of fun. <coughs> hey, they had me for like a three episodes and they lo <coughs> lost it. Sorry. Three episodes <coughs> of the entire like three seasons that you watched, that's all you enjoyed out of it. 
Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and you want? I, I give okay. a show four episodes, man. If I if, if, I, if I wasn't sick, I would have never even made it through three seasons. <laughs> I was homesick, so I didn't. I was I couldn't watch things that Pat wanted to watch with me, so I had to pick something mm-hmm. that. Uh, so I hit Succession because everyone was. I already feel terrible, so I'm not gonna watch something I like. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't. Cause then I'd get in trouble uh, for watching it without Pat. So. You gotta make a burner Netflix account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was succession. It was okay, and then like by the end of the third season, I was like, "This is fucking garbage." I'm glad that you they can... wrapped it though. I'm glad that they yeah. were like, "This is it. We're gonna end it here." Because they could have kept it going, and it, it would have just kept doing the same. I, I feel that way about Game of Thrones because yeah. it's basically just like a business Game of Thrones. Like it's the same thing. Right, same concept. So I'm glad that they were like, "No, let's wrap it here." <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I did ball on one episode this season, like disgusting throw up, turned it off. Yeah, didn't turn no, I did it back twice. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So succession. Everyone loved the ending, I guess. So. <laughs> now, H- now HBO doesn't have anything for anyone to watch anymore. Uh, you mean Max? <laughs> Who watches HBO proper anymore? <laughs> we, only U.S. people. Oh, because it's HBO switched. Max is a U.S. only thing. Really? Because it, it yeah. saves me $8 a month because I was able to cancel Discovery Plus since they merged together. And, you know, yeah. I'm a trash oh. person who pays for commercial free to watch 90 Day Fiance. Um, <laughs> well, wait, maybe not U.S. only. I know they don't have it in England and they don't have it in Canada, so... We just have plain HBO that's done. So, like, anything... Uh, the animated series for... Uh, what's her name? Joker's girlfriend. Fuck, I can't. Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Harley Quinn. That, I think you have to subscribe to Adult Swim, because here it's broadcast oh. on Adult Swim, I think. Okay. So you, it's not even included with the HBO subscription. And see, so. we have Adult Swim on Max on HBO. So. Uh, see, here it's not combined, the two. Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. Oh well. The what good Adult do? Swim stuffs on Hulu though, man. They got the Venture Brothers on there, and that's all I care about. Like, we don't have Hulu in Canada, <laughs> so <laughs> it's great. How, how are you watching anything up there? I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pirate really to get some stuff. I mean, what do you want me to? Do? What do you want to do? You have to pirate some of the stuff if you want to watch it. Is that what PB really stands for? <laughs> Pi- Pirate Bay? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what one of them are called? Yeah, that's like probably one of the more infamous okay. like torrent like sites. Torrent, torrent mm-hmm. ones? Okay. Yeah. yeah. When they used to do like commercials to scare kids into like if you download, you're going to jail. Or you wouldn't <laughs> download a car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but we could get VPNs. You get a VPN subscription, then you can sign up to anything you want. Mm-hmm. Like, because then they don't know what your IP address is. It's like you can make it in the US, then you could get HBO Max and all these other things. Yeah, you can also watch other people's like Netflix. You can like watch the stuff in Japan, so you can just like watch yeah. anime. Yeah, you can set it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's pretty popular. The VPNs. A lot of people have subscriptions to VPNs here in Canada. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to do a shout out to my oldest son, Warren. He's six, and today he proved that you can have a favorite child. Um, <laughs> we were watching, I bought the Mario movie on Google, yeah. and so we were watching it for the first time, and he turns to me and he was like, Mommy, you look like Princess Peach. And I said, Thank you. And before I could say thank you, my oldest, who is 11, goes, <laughs> Like she guffawed, and I said, "You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no more birthdays for you." <laughs> That's it. I said, "You know what? You can have a favorite, especially after waking up and watching Evil Dead." <laughs> Just open the door. <laughs> yeah, I said, "Not, not." What did she call her kids on that? Uh, the titty sucking parasite. Yeah, yeah. titty sucking parasite. Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at her and I said, let me get out my notes <laughs> from Evil Dead. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, that's a perfect segue. So let's get to it. Because I think that was. You don't look 
look so good, Mom. <laughs> That's exactly how I smiled at her after she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just threw up a teaser. Didn't want to put a full trailer. Hey, all the trailers are like two minutes or more. I was like, fuck that. Yeah. I just did through a two minute trailer. Just, so I just went and found some a teaser. 30 seconds, 20 seconds. That's perfect. It yeah. pretty much gives you all you need. Like, like, they totally did give you, like, there was a favorite child in the film. Because, like, watching the trailers and stuff, I didn't know that there were, like, two older. Siblings, <laughs> yeah, no. I didn't set you up for that at all. You just knew that there was a little girl in it, and I'm yeah. kind of glad that they had the other children too. Because you, I don't know if you guys, but like, I had no illusions. I did not think that the little girl was ever in any danger in the film. So, kind of happy that that they they involved the. And I, I actually really liked the one older daughter. I thought she was probably the best actor in the film i i don't know the actress's mm -hmm. name but i thought that she gave probably the strongest performance she was um definitely going for the gold in it especially after she else. turned yeah i was like you creep me out friend yeah you creep me out mm. yeah she did a she did a great job too the mother uh who's the actress elisa sutherland she I thought awesome. everybody was. I thought it was a great cast. I liked that they mm -hmm. were both kind of alt, not having to be opposites, because I think that's like a too common trope, where mm -hmm. you have opposite sisters. And I felt like they both kind of meshed well together. And then yeah. the family too, like it made sense. Like it didn't feel like they were forcing anything. It kind of felt organic. Yeah, that they all got along and they all liked each other. It kind of made it a little tragic what was going to happen to them. Yeah. I, I kind of felt that way too when like they had like all three of the kids playing with each other and none of them were being bratty or anything like that. They were like actually like acting like normal um, siblings. I thought that that was yeah. The the lead up to like the horror in the film I thought was pretty well done to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, the tone was good. I I like the intro too. Like yeah, uh, I, I, was, I was I was I was like, how is this tying into the going to New York into the mm -hmm. apartment building? And I was trying to figure out how they were gonna connect everything, but then it's revealed at the end how it's all connected, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, now you knew it was gonna connect somehow, but trying to figure out as you're watching it was kind of, and then, then you right. kind of forget, and then it comes back, you're like, oh yeah, from the beginning, you know, right? So oh yeah, there was a cabin in the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that title screen fantastic 10 yes. out of 10 yes. iconic yeah. like i love a good title screen and that right there even if the rest of the movie was trash i was like whoever did that deserves a raise yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. and weathering heights you guys i feel like every so so many years people find a way to ruin it for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was like no now i'm gonna hear it in her voice <laughs> yeah with the with the <laughs> <laughs> uh the the drone thing it was too funny oh uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't really do anything it would just mess you up a little bit and then <laughs> even like the like that second set like the second kind of intro to the sister to uh beth right beth or uh, yeah beth um yeah, beth, yeah. with her like peeing making direct eye contact with the camera and then it like like skill like skewering off like she's staring at something on the wall. And I said, no, I see what you're doing, and I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And I and I felt like throughout the movie they they did things that they knew would trigger me personally. I don't do bugs. I don't do crawling weird. I don't do I don't do I have an irrational fear of being scalped since I was a kid growing up in like by Knott's Berry Farm and learning like Indian culture like Native American culture very early scalping is an irrational fear of mine and so i just felt like every time something new popped up i said yeah um, and then the audio for this movie was just disgusting i was mm -hmm. disgusted i don't think i would have made it in a movie theater uh listening to this movie no mm -hmm. yeah and i think the fact that they did like taking it from the woods into an urban setting where mm -hmm. it was like a condemned building which made perfect sense, right? It's it's a little run down, so you an older building getting ready to be torn down. Less people in the building because most people have already found new places to live. So I like the way that was introduced and it kinda made it feel more you, you get that sense of isolation even though it's in a big apartment building because many people left because of the because it's condemned. Because and, they have to, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you you keep it 
to a pretty small cast of characters with like a few of the neighbors and I, I thought that was handled pretty well and I fit, didn't I kind tongue. of I kind of wish that they did more with that like it, it was all like con, con condensed down to one scene and kind of just rushed out and the rest of it was just them hiding in an apartment I think that made it scarier home. to me though because mm. it was like the stakes were higher because you can't where are you gonna go like there's yep. nowhere to go to and and then even with like the neighbors i liked all the neighbors i think the one the older guy he kind of reminded me of bill from left for dead if any of you guys play that and so i thought that was funny because he's like characters in dead by daylight also with uh, ash and so but i i i cared about the neighbors i cared about the little kids neighbors and i was like what are you guys doing all the kids i said not even one just a little, <laughs> just just that one <laughs> yeah. i was surprised at both both of the older kids too like i i know like <laughs> evil dead has like you know a a way of being brutal <laughs> but like for some mm. reason in my head i'm like surely not all of her kids <laughs> surely yeah. not the whole family um, well, I think what was off putting about this in particular is they actually got like kids to play the kids in it. Whereas, yeah. like back in the day, they would have got people that were like twenty five to play. Like, mm -hmm. like the lady that played um, uh, Beth probably would have played the oldest daughter. Like, the yeah. daughter. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. like, actually seeing the, like kids being like murdered in the film, mm -hmm. it, it was like a little, um, a little triggering. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know what you mean. Like, especially when. Um, Stephanie got used. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, that made me laugh a little. I'm not gonna lie. I was looking for as soon as they introduced Stephanie, I was looking forward to when she would be used. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah. it sucks it was used tank. against a good child, but because I'm yeah. uh, the whole movie, I'm like, and I read this think piece on it because I thought it was so interesting because I was curious because they don't they don't ever like gender any of the kids, right? And mm -hmm. so the oldest. Uh, Danny, I was like, they keep calling this person Danny, 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 and they don't there's no gender markers, like they don't do any of that, and it was very intentional because the actor who plays that person is trans, and they uh. did, there was like this think piece that was like thank you for making like a dumb trans character without making it obvious, like e this is what we mean by equality and I thought that was so <laughs> funny, because I was like, yes, we all deserve a chance at seeing ourselves be the stupid idiot yeah. who steals an ancient yeah. evil <laughs> because oh, when, when i tell you i was like what are you not that the crosses the sarcophagus like no there's not one thing that's telling you not a good idea yeah seriously <laughs> and the book i like the way they did the book too with the, like the yeah. teeth that were the lock and yeah. then it opens it, it was like there's I did not like this... the book i thought Why? That... There was no face on it. Like, yeah, there was no yeah, personality. Yeah. It could have had a little bit more personality. The teeth were neat, but yeah. like everything yeah. else about it, I like the art in the older book better. I like that there were actually words in the older book because like I don't know what the hell the guy was reading on the tape because like if you look at when like they're looking yeah. at the book, there's just pictures in it. Like mm. I, I don't know. I, I thought that it could have been done a little stronger because like. It, it was one of the kind of things that really let me down about the film. I, I, I thought it, the records I thought were really neat looking though. I thought that those were pretty, pretty scary. I was just laughing because I was like, oh, I guess in 10 years, there's going to be like a sequel and they're going to find like tapes or, or like haunted CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Cassette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Limited edition pressing the yeah. vinyls with special colors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Pressed was, in human yeah. flesh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, you really have to go out of your way to not only unleash an ancient evil, but then have a record player to play <laughs> the incantations on. Mm -hmm. uh, Three times. Of... <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, that. that's one thing that really pissed me off is when she went in the room by herself with the headphones yes! on. Yes! Like, everything <laughs> bad happened. It's like, yeah, you I know. I'm the like, worst what hero the fuck? ever. You don't smell yeah. that child kebab in the kitchen cooking <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. and she's pregnant too i was like you don't smell that <laughs> she's just lost uh that that made me laugh and then it was t kind of funny too because i know they had to like turn it manually but it was like i was like waiting for them to like 
ever, ever, you know, like yeah. <laughs> remix it a little bit, <laughs> or maybe play it in reverse to like I don't know, reverse it. I don't know, but I thought that was funny. Yeah, I gotta say they got lucky by doing it nowadays because um, like vinyl's actually trendy again, so like they could actually pull something like that off because. Um, in the original, they used reel-to-reel tape, and I guess they could kind of pull that off again, but it would just be so, like, just doing the same thing over again, so. Yeah. Like, they got... And it's lucky. not something, like, a 16-year-old's going to have in the apartment. Well, yeah. Danny was, like, a DJ, yeah. so, like... <laughs> I don't know if he's going to have a reel-to-reel. <laughs> <laughs> going to try. Right. Yeah. But the way they set this up, they open the door wide open for the world to expand like outside of like ash and everything right mm-hmm. because like the show did it a little bit but ash was always centric to, to mm-hmm. the whole story and the book but now it's like it's about the book anyone can find this book and unleash this holy hell and yeah. they really open up the franchise to go in whatever direction they want now i don't it's... even think they have to find the book right because the girl at the end she just got uh, possessed by the the demon you never see yeah they made it contagious that. like it's yeah. like yeah and so i i kind of like that it also made me like stress out even more and like yeah that chainsaw long run uh <laughs> friend i don't think and then even with like the debris like how it was shaking on the on the ground like it was gonna reform i said don't mm. do that i don't want to see because when when i tell you when they started digging into each other and making one form Listen, you can ask anybody. I hate weird crawling things. I don't like it. And so when it formed all together, I said, no, you already crawled twice in this movie. Why would you do it as, like, a thruple? Like, don't do that. I don't like it. And so that, and, like, I think for me, just because I was genuinely creeped out by this movie, like, 10 out of 10, because I I usually don't, like, get creeped out genuinely. And this one, like, I was... I was turning away from the screen because I, I didn't want to see some stuff. I didn't want to hear some things. <laughs> and aside from maybe one particular scene, I think the winks that they made towards the original mm-hmm. was just right. They didn't they mm-hmm. didn't force it. It wasn't overdone. There was just that one cheesy I kinda scene. I kind of wish they didn't rush it all in at the end. I wish they yeah. kind of spaced it out through the film because they kind of yeah. just throw all the winks at like mm-hmm. the last five minutes. And I thought... Yeah. It's but like, they did they get... remembered. Hey, this is De- Evil Dead. Let's. We need a shotgun, a chainsaw. <laughs> we need to say Dead by Dawn. We need to say I'll swallow your soul. We need to say Come get some. We need to say like all this stuff in this this little short time period. It's like they could have spaced it out. Yeah, no, it was better. like rapid fire. <laughs> I liked how like the priests were multi ethnic, because like when are you gonna find a haunted work with a a black priest? a white priest and, like, an Asian priest. And I said, please stop. Just go back to what you guys are doing. That part made me laugh. Like, I paused it, and I said, what are they doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. It would have been three white <laughs> <laughs> But I loved how, like, even, like, there was, like, a scene where the evil was, like, first coming into the building. Like, when the mom went downstairs with the, with the box and, um, even from outside all of these protections against evil that were in the vault and then even like visually outside all the light poles were crosses like leading up to the building and so i was like and here goes danny (laughs) i don't think these crosses mean anything (laughs) and uh that really fine (laughs) but titty sucking parasites is definitely gonna go into my vernacular I thought that um, Bridget was kind of a cool mom because she gave her kid a face tattoo. You know, I, that's pretty edgy. That's pretty cool, right? Mm. <laughs> she's like, yeah, I'll give you a face tattoo. Um, she's very cool mom. Of her, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. a cool mom. I thought, and then the eyeball choke. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> See, that was the that was the one part that they went a little cheesy. Mm-hmm. Because all the other parts were the effects, like the eating the glass. It was all quite well done. Mm-hmm. Like, But that eyeball part was like kind of a wink to the campiness of the yeah. originals. Yeah. yeah, But that's why jumped, I liked it. Jumped far into part two territory. Yeah, that whole hallway yeah. scene was pretty silly. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it's probably my favorite part of the yeah. film, though, because I love that fisheye angle. And like, yeah. she gets, 
hit by Until a they turn that top, they throw that toddler against the wall. And I was like, no, okay, I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is, I was like, this is too much. No. Uh, I wrote down in my notes, uh, you guys remember that, like, meme from a couple years ago, Damn It, Daniel? Oh, uh, yeah, with the white <laughs> shoes again, Yeah, I, I said, I said, this is Damn It, Daniel, the movie, because Danny keeps <laughs> <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> the bloody eggs. Disgusting. This movie was so mm. freaking gross. It was, that was so, so gross. triggering. I cannot. Yes, because if I pop an egg and it has two yolks, I don't even eat it. <laughs> I don't even need it. Let there be That's a little. A sp- no, let it have a little speckle or something. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm so nope. easily grossed out by stuff like that. Like I, I can't. I couldn't. The earring snag is one of my greatest fears too. I said I'm done. I'm done. I don't even want to finish this. <laughs> That's stuff that made it really evil, Daddy. Though that, that yeah, stuff that like really kind of hammered home. That and like my favorite effect probably was um, the face tattoo when it started spreading. That was mm-hmm. my favorite throwback because yeah. it reminded me of the um, pencil ankle from part one, where like mm-hmm. it kind of spreads out like a spider web. I always loved that effect, and I think they kind of updated it very well. And yeah, the whole um, was the little girl's name Bridget too. Uh, her transformation was was really crazy. Like yeah, and the whole I don't like things in my tummy like. <laughs> <laughs> when 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 the mom goes, all, all I want is your little head, baby girl. <laughs> I said I'm gonna start using that one too when my kids act up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! And the uh, there was that Jesus jump scare was great. I thought that was like a really great addition in the beginning of the movie. <clears throat> and it was funny because like I had subtitles on. And when they're showing, like, the priests and stuff, and uh, Danny's listening to the record for the first time, it says forceful creaking, but it was clearly, like, evil voices harmonizing. <laughs> and I'm like, that's forceful creaking? <laughs> I would be so confused if I couldn't, like, hear it. Because uh, it was definitely, I think, I did, the audio, again, in this movie is phenomenal. Like, mm-hmm. if nothing else, definitely yeah. elevated it. Forceful creaking, like, it sounded probably more like the sound your dogs make when an ambulance is going by. It was just like all... Kind of, it, in mm. harmony, though. Like, yeah. there's, a, there's a couple dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um. Like I said before, we, I, we mentioned it briefly, and I thought they did a nice job of giving you just enough for, like, the older fans. Mm-hmm. And, and, well, like, a point where new fans can come and jump in, become new fans, I mean, and just jump For right sure. in and, and keep going. So I, I think they struck a, a pretty good balance between, like, to make everybody kind of more or less happy with with the results in the film. I kind of wish our hero was cooler. Like, mm-hmm. like when she, when, yeah. when it's time for her to become badass, I didn't think she stepped up and went all the way, man. Like, I kind of wish yeah. they did her a little better because I think the actress could have went there. I don't think the baby, I, I don't think that the story behind the baby was strong enough for that to be her reason. Well, that was kind of her only characteristic, too, is that she was... Like, like we don't have a reason to be like, okay, but we don't know, like, this baby doesn't seem like it would be in the way of anything with how progressive they are, if that makes sense. So right. I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, I don't... So I, I agree with you on that. Um, and I also really enjoyed... Um, there was, like, a tongue-in-cheek or out-of-cheek joke at the beginning, like, <laughs> where they were, like, joking about decapitation, like, oh, it wasn't even, like, a full decapitation, and then the guy ends up getting, like, not just decapitated, but, like, his whole, like, bust <laughs> is ripped off, and I was like, I'm gonna like this movie. I was like, because that was funny in a gro- <laughs> very gross way. That was hilarious that they did that. Because I, because I, I thought that the girl was gonna get decapitated, and that would have that was gonna be like the thing. So for him, his whole bust to just pop out the water, <laughs> I was screaming. And I said, this movie is about to be gross and hilarious. Mm-hmm. But it was actually kind of depressing. But I did like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't. Too it much wasn't fun. fun. Yeah. It wasn't as fun as older yeah, no. Evil yeah. Dead movies, but it was for me. Like if I didn't know anything about Evil Dead, this I feel like this was a solid horror movie. Yeah, they definitely lightened it up from the reboot from uh, yeah, it was 2016 yeah. or whatever. It's definitely a lot lighter than that one. That if you want dark, depressing, the reboot was like uh, real very dark. dark. 
yeah. Very dark, yeah. 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 So, yeah, man, I enjoyed it. Uh, Pat enjoyed it. Uh, I definitely recommend anyone go watch this if... I mean, even if you're not a fan of it. I mean, you don't have to know everything about the originals to enjoy this one. Uh, but if you have watched them, you'll be able to pick up on a few things here and there that... Uh, that they made a few winks towards the originals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good for a watch. I mean, like, it'll definitely, um, you know, if you watch it with a, a partner, it'll scare them pretty good. You'll have a good time with it, I think. <laughs> You're like, if you want to traumatize somebody, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anything goes that far. I think I, I, I had a lot of fun with the gore um, segments. I think that they were really loose with it. I think if mm-hmm. you watch them, kind of it was more of a, co- a comedical setting i think that they really nail it turn on a laugh track (laughs) with cheese grater (laughs) oh yeah the cheese grater yeah Mm -hmm. not really that but like the big um one at the end with the with the um the tree um chair and like all all that i thought was pretty funny like i thought that they kind of nailed the nailed some of the timing and um especially the hallway scene like i think that that went full evil dead i think that like Uh That was at least a really good wink and nod for fans because that went yeah. pretty wacky and like, and, and it's a good long scene too. Like you get you the people, the people actually, scene. Actually, I'd say both the hallway scenes. I guess the hallway and the elevator. I should clarify. But elevator, like, I yeah. I think that the elevator kind of is a hallway scene too because it kind of starts yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The, those ones go kind of full Evil Dead for you, so there is some pretty good stuff for <clears throat> fans. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it kind of goes a little new school. But I, I gotta say, man, they keep the gore really raunchy. It's it's mm-hmm. like Gal yeah. said, it's really gross. And like the big final um, hula who whoop de do whatever you want to call it with the big <laughs> boss. It, it, it's really gross. It's really gnarly. It's yeah, it played out like video game, huh? Like he, yes. <laughs> it played like out like a video boss. game. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost like the bird lady or whatever you want to call her from part two, um, in the basement. It kind of reminded yeah. me of that fight. Yeah. So, like, you kind of miss that type of gore horror. Like this, this kind of this kind of hits some pretty good nails on it, their heads. So. But one of you guys said I can't remember. It was like off the record. You guys were talking about it a while ago, and you said one of you guys said you wish it had been like a little bit more campy. I think um, I was saying that when I was pissed when we were yeah, talking about it. I think it, 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 yeah. And I but, agree. But I agree with you to an extent because I felt like the whole movie I was like on edge. Where like on the older Evil Dead movies, I would have had at least a couple moments where I'm like, <laughs> everything's gonna oh, be fine. <laughs> Everybody's gonna die, but it's gonna be fun. <laughs> and like, this one, I was just like, oh, my stomach hurt the whole time. I'm like, no, this kid is dead. Now this kid is dead. Now this kid is. The hallway kids are dead. <laughs> Everybody's dead. And then, <laughs> but I loved how self-aware the youngest one was. Like, because I feel like I feel like that's very much resonates with like kids today. Like, I don't feel like in a situation like that, a child is gonna be oblivious to what death and. Uh, like possession and stuff like that is especially when they're watching nothing but horror on youtube and that's like their daily Mm. consumption and so i like that she was very much self-aware like this thing is happening i know you're not my mom um so i really did appreciate that like they didn't make her stupid they didn't make her naive or anything like that i like that Mm -hmm. yeah the whole if you ever have kids you'll be a good mom why is that well you know how to lie to kids (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, man, uh, definitely a decent flick. So, second part of today's show will be uh, Renfield. The- I work for Dracula. Let's see. Count Dracula. No, President Dracula. Yes, of course. Yes. I feel like in his Some call me the Dark One. Others, the Lord of Death. <laughs> You're like the guy that gets the villain's postmates. I will no longer tolerate abuse. So that's a no. As to you bringing me my dinner tonight? Not a no. No, not no. Renfield. Is it yummy? Yes. We did our April 14th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one, man. Um, yeah. I, I didn't know that this was a comic book movie. or I, It had some kind of thing to do with it, because at the end of it, it said Skybound, which is Kirkman, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh. Hmm. So, kind of ties Fun back fact. to that. Yeah. Uh-oh, I feel a little animosity, Cookie. Yeah. Me? <laughs> no. Unless they're starting uh, with all that uh, Walking Dead money, they're starting to produce uh, features now. Mm. Well, this really reminded me of a comic book while I was watching it. It has that kind of um, over-the-topness, plus the villains are kind of really cheesy, especially, what's his name, Teddy Lobo? Like, I mean, come on, man. I'm Teddy fucking Lobo! <laughs> well, he, he co-wrote it. Who, Kirky? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. When I went and looked at the credits, here, I'll, I'll pop it back up to, just to confirm, but uh, I think he was a co-writer of it. Yeah. So he probably produced part of it, too, with uh, Skybound, man. So I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, He's got a a lot of money these days, right? With the the whole that whole Walking Dead uh, thing that that happened a little while back. Well, I think he nailed it with what he was doing in this film. I think everybody did. Like, I, I don't say this kind um too often, but like this movie's a total blast and really nailed what it was going for. Like, I really liked it. It, it has some really really um hard hitting subject matter with the toxic and um codependent mm-hmm. relationships, mm-hmm. but. It never loses its funny edge. It stays just adorable and hilarious the entire time, which I thought was a neat, neat bouncing trick for a, a film in the modern age. Uh, the director was uh, Chris McKay, who uh, mm-hmm. did the Amazon movie, The Tomorrow War. He did the Lego Batman movie. He did uh, directed some episodes of uh, Robot Chicken. So that that's some of his work that he's done in the past. Yeah, it has that, like, hectic energy yeah. of a robot chicken or Lego Batman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of random stuff getting thrown at you at any given second in this film. It moves pretty kinetically. Mm. I'm curious to hear Cookie's take and then I will go after because I'm curious. <clears throat> the side eyes. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> no. No? Side eyes, No. <laughs> No, I, I all right. I love Nick Cage. Everybody knows this. I think he did a great job. I did not like this movie. I I I because I think I went into it expecting something different than what we got. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting this whole like uh, mobster thing, like that was pretty much the entire story with like a side story of Dracula and this toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I wasn't wasn't my thing. I didn't appreciate it. No, mm. Elle, what did you think? <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I thought <laughs> Nicolas Cage plays the original Gaslighter so well, mm-hmm. almost scarily so. I was like, he's such a good Gaslighter. I just know that based on his relationship track record in real life, he's probably the problem 99% of the time. Because mm-hmm. he did it a little bit too well. <laughs> and I... I the role, real yes. Nice. I yeah. just love the idea that, like, Dracula was, like, gaslighting Redfield <laughs> this whole movie. And I'm just... I was, like, crying laughing because I'm like, I know people like this in real life. And <laughs> it's like, hey, watch this movie. I bet they would be like, yeah, I'm Team Dracula. <laughs> because... <laughs> And even Aquafina. Aquafina sometimes can grate my nerves Mm -hmm. to the point where I'm like, I'm out. Now, the movie she did that was, like, nominated a while back about the first, like, Chinese immigration, like, the first gen, I love that movie. But usually she gets on my nerves. I love Nora. I love Nora, but there's some movies I can't do. On this, I give her a 3 out of 10 annoying scale. Um, (laughs) She didn't annoy me that bad. (laughs) She was okay. I love the dynamic with her and her sister. I thought it played well comedically uh, with that backstory where she's like, she's like, because usually when you're trying to reform the police force, you're kind of a little bit on the down low about it. And I loved how like, no, I'm bringing all of you motherfuckers down. I love that aspect of it because I'm like, it's so stupid. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it only works with how, and then even that scene at the beginning, like that first scene with Renfield and her, 
at the at the bar. bar? Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Like, no, like he just murdered a whole bunch of people. And she's like, hey, thanks You're for help. Hero? Thanks for helping. Thanks for helping. He just cut off people's arms. <laughs> and it was You're just so yeah. Thank you. And I feel what's his name? Nicholas Holt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Nicholas yeah. Holt, you know, I feel like career wise, I followed him pretty closely just because age and movies I was interested at the time. And and so I, I like that he still could do like ridiculous stuff like this and still be taken as a serious actor because this yeah. this was so dumb. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was so dumb. It was brilliant. And again, like just Dracula. And then it was so gross visually. I will say on not as bad as you know Evil Dead where it was like over. This is like palp like palatable palatable, and <laughs> except for like Dracula himself in recovery. <laughs> I said ew. Yeah, oh my god, that was so. <laughs> the first time they show him, yeah, he looks like that dude in Robocop when he's melting. <laughs> like, yes, he's like legit, yes. like that nasty looking. I was just like, oh, that's a gory effect. When he was burnt up, and he said, "You okay?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, he's yeah. not okay." <laughs> Yeah, I like, fuck you, Kyle! <laughs> <laughs> I've never really seen Aquafina before. I think I, she was in Shang-Chi, right? I think that's yeah. the thing yeah. I yeah. seen her in. Yeah. But I thought she was hilarious in this. She, like, had me rolling a lot of the times. Her and Holt had some really good chemistry. And, yeah, I just, I, 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 that way she kind of just walked around talking shit. I thought she was good at it. I thought she was pretty mm-hmm. funny. Well, she just gets flack for having, like, a fake black scent. Yeah. Um. So, but and sometimes she takes it a little bit <laughs> too nope. far. I think she's far, she's yeah. also scuttle in Little Mermaid, the, the which I movie. just found out today. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's weird. <laughs> that's weird. I also loved the whole argument about Scott at the beginning, man. Yes. So, like, is that the one that's like ninety nine percent horns? Wait, mm-hmm. you don't understand, Scott? Oh, wait, who am I? Like, oh, when time. the cop was like, her partner was like, I thought Scott was dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, come on, Scott. Listen, I and I'm not gonna. We don't have to dwell on it, but you know, being born and raised in Orange County. Ska was like a pretty big pillar <laughs> of my youth. Well, I love Ska, but the one idea of Ska Punk stealing cocaine, I thought was really great. Was, the head, I lost it. That's kind of when I like decided I loved the film. I'm like, they're sitting there like listening to some skank and pickle mm-hmm. while they're cutting up some drugs. I'm like, it never happens, yeah. but I love it. <laughs> when, when he punched his head through the building, I said, oh, this is going to be great. Because <laughs> that is so dumb. Yeah. But, like, uh, it, the violence was so over the top, but I, it was well done. Like, when he throws the people's arms and, like, they <laughs> nail the people and stick them to mm-hmm. the walls, that should have been so dumb. But, like, it, I love it. It was thought, so dumb. I thought I thought it looked <laughs> great, though. I thought they thought they had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was like, this is a movie that's, like, rated R, but I wouldn't care if my kids watched it because it's, like, so Because rid- I tell you, like, before, when the trailers were going on YouTube heavy, my six-year-old, my beloved Warren, he came to me and he said, <laughs> he was like, am I too young to watch this? And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But after having watched it, I might, I don't, I don't feel like it was, I, I feel like it was silly enough that the violence is kind of like, it doesn't feel like visceral or real. Yeah. It's like um, cartoonish. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think he'd be more scared of Dracula in, again if, recovering than anything yeah. getting cut off or exploded. Wow. Yeah, because it was extremely, like, campy. Like, it mm-hmm. was gory, but done in a campy way that it's fun... fun violence, you know? It's not, yeah. like, ultra-violent, like, grotesque violence, you know? Mm-hmm. They make it over-the-top, campy, so, yeah. Yeah, it reminded me of, like, Dead Alive, kind of, like, yeah. the gore <laughs> in it. Like, when yeah. it, like, jumps off the balcony and just, like, Tears the guy in half. It was really bad. Now, would you rather die like a fun death like this, or like a dramatic death, a la Evil Dead? Because I f- feel like for me, I need the emotional weight of you being sad. So when I feel like a Renfield death is kind of a throwaway. Like y'all, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't get over it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I was talking with Johnny and. 
uh, Nicholas Holt's uh, character Renfield. I thought they made him look just like a uh, old, like an old school emo kind of like uh, Gerard mm-hmm. Way. Yeah. The yes. whole time I was watching, I was like, "Fuck! It's why don't they just cast Gerard Way, man? They could have yeah. cast him as uh, Renfield, you know." It I bothered me. I was like, <laughs> no, I did not like the makeover scene either. I was like, he was fine before. You didn't like the sweater, the multicolored. No. <laughs> but I love the the sequence because I love a makeover sequence in movies. I love mm. it. But so when he was redoing the apartment and he's like adding a splash of color, that had me rolling. I said this is hilarious. I like how he put up like all the posters in one spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like posters. Yolo, okay. the yellow one. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're immortal. <laughs> and at one point, as I'm watching Nicholas Cage, I'm like, did Dracula just turn into Austin Powers? <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's some scenes I was like. I feel like I'm watching an Austin Powers movie. <laughs> it felt like he was doing that. Then all of a sudden he like starts acting like his character from Face Off. Like I think he ran the gamut of yeah. Nicolas Cage on this. Like every he's single fantastic. thing he's ever done, he so he good. put it into this movie. Yeah. Like if you go through, you could be like, okay, that that was his character from Face Off. This was his character from whatever movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he ran the gamut of all every probably everything he's ever done throughout his career he put into this movie mm-hmm. and uh, in any little way or in a bunch of different little scenes yeah i like that that mont that black and white montage at the beginning like i bet you're wondering I how i got here <laughs> <laughs> it was so great i was like oh my gosh and and even like especially with nick like nicholas cage i just have like such i feel like uh, i don't want to say like yeah it's like such a, like a childhood fondness for him that, mm-hmm. like, I just feel like he's innocent. Like, he didn't do it. Whatever he's being accused of any time. And so it was just very wholesome <laughs> to see, like, just oh, like, look at him through the ages. And then <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate gaslighter. But also, it's mm-hmm. Nicolas Cage. Right. And and I and when they showed, like, that underground uh, dwelling they were at the first time, I was like, you couldn't even tell, like, is this a movie prop or his real house? Like, it was, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Filmed on location. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. For sure. But uh, overall, I I, I kind of liked the outfits that they put him in. They were pretty fun. The Dracula like outfits? Get, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, the costume design in this was, was pretty fun. Like you said, they, they even do, like, a makeover in it where they change Renfield's look from goth, which I pref- much preferred compared to... <laughs> What they changed him into that, whatever straight lace, the white bread, as white as you could get. Look, you know, he looked like <laughs> the whitest white person you could ever find in style, mm-hmm. you know. So anyway, I mean, <laughs> he's a in style, like <clears throat> not and, style, you know. And how red, like red and Dracula, he that like by the end he was looking like a like a eighteen hundreds p i m p. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which, which I could appreciate, yeah. especially for him. I said he probably a nice touch. I said he probably picked this outfit. Yeah, <laughs> the goldfish platforms. I'm sure he asked for. He might actually <laughs> own him. Like he's a weird guy. He owns a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> like, you'd be surprised, dude. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, some of the stuff he <laughs> Jay Jones is probably based off of like old outfits that he bought off of Dolomite sets or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guarantee you he collects stuff like that. Yeah, well, what was that picture he was wearing that leather, was it a purple leather jacket? A while back, a couple years ago, he posted, there was a social media post of him wearing like this cool ass jacket, man. And uh, it was it was pretty wild. Oh, it's there. like the, the leopard shirt, right? I think so. It was almost yeah. straight out of like uh, No More Heroes. It was like straight out of No More Heroes mm-hmm. type stuff. It, it was pretty mm-hmm. cool. And I think he was just wearing that normally. Like, and he was it wearing wasn't, like a cowboy hat? Possibly. I don't know. But yeah. Oh, at the end of the food truck, you know, like he does. <laughs> at the end of the movie with the black lips, I hella thought that Nicholas Holt could play the crow. I was like, I never thought of him mm. as that role, but like seeing him like looking like that being all hardcore. I was like, he could probably do it. Like, it's they... controversial to say in front of Cookie. What's yeah, that? <laughs> oh, what the the, the crow? Reader? Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't say he has I'm, to be Eric Draven. I'm mean, keeping can... myself open to it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, and if you if 
also in uh, the uh, Mad Max movie too. Like, you know, he he I plays just that realized weird... like two days ago that that was him. That was him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he does a good job there, where he kind of yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's a pretty good actor. He's pretty versatile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good in everything I've seen him in. Like, I'm a pretty big Nicholas Holt fan. For, like, one of them younger pretty boys, he's actually a really good actor. Mm, pretty boys Who, is a strange one. Who's mm. cast as the crow right now? It's changed so often, I, I can't even Last keep I heard it was Momoa, but I don't think yeah. he's... But I don't think that's going into production. Like, I don't think so. I, I, see, like, th- that's the thing. I'm not talking about them remaking the Eric Draven story. There's been a lot of really good crow stories. <clears throat> I've been comics mm-hmm. like they could do like skinning the wolves, and I think Nicholas Holt would be really good at the crow in that, which is about like this like Holocaust, like it takes place in a concentration camp, and this guy that's there just totally takes out the camp. It, it's wonderful. I, I the Nazis in the camp, not the. Yes, I was just about to say uh, Nicholas Holt for just recency bias. I didn't. I was like, yeah, he is gonna be like Joculus, like cuck and incompetent because i hated him in the menu in a good way like fantastic movie hated him and so when i was watching this i was like i don't like you (laughs) 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 i don't even like you and that's why she got that burger at the end so uh, but i was i I was like i didn't uh, he's really good at playing like i feel a like very broad range of roles so Mm -hmm. I would I would watch him in whatever. Yeah, I've seen movies with him that were not great, but I feel like the good ones outweigh. And he's in the great, which is great. <laughs> See, I don't blame him for the. <laughs> he's like still good in the X Men movies. Those are just bad. Yeah, no, I, I liked him in the X Men movies. He was um he was actually like dating. J- Jennifer, I call her J Law to my friends because I feel like she's my best friend <laughs> in real life. But Jennifer Lawrence, she was he was like dating her during like the fappening, and so I was always like, "It's your fault! <laughs> it's your fault!" <laughs> she was sending you life. those. You don't remember like back in the two thousands when the fappening happened and Four Chan, yeah, Four yeah. Chan released all of those celebrity girls nudes. Oh, um, and, that's not what it. That's not what it's called. The yeah, yeah the yeah. fappening. And Jennifer Lawrence was one of them, and it was like while they were filming like uh, X Men and all this, and like she was sending mm-hmm. these pictures to him, and I was like, "It's your fault. You asked for these." Mm-hmm. And she Look was just being doing. a good girlfriend. Is that really so I did- the story? Wow. Huh? I didn't know that that was really the story. Yeah, they were together at that time, and the the nudes that were leaked were the, the nudes that were taken like during their relationship. Was it like stolen from his phone, or did he let it? Oh yeah, no, it's not his fault. Okay. It was it was the internet's fault. It was 4chan. Yeah, like people, it was trolls and people. Hacked, yeah, yeah. People were hacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a whole bunch hacking of. Clouds it was Miley Cyrus, yeah. Vanessa Hudgens, Jennifer Lawrence. It was a lot of women. Yeah, young Arjun. young women. Yeah. You don't even have to anymore now with the deep fakes. You just yeah. <laughs> uh oh, he has a Photoshop folder. He's trying. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's making you right now, Johnny. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> he's got three cats. <laughs> three cats. <laughs> One on each nipple. <laughs> <laughs> he has three nipples. <laughs> oh gosh, reveal here. Some people tear. do. Oh, Some people God. do. No, and it's no shade if you do. It's all good. All good. The more the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, how many nipples do cats have? Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> He's setting you up. Don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> his friend killed. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's nice to see Nicolas Cage uh, doing comedies again. Uh, yeah. What was the other one he did before? The one where he played himself? Uh, the the cost, weight of... The terrible yeah, weight, weight of massive yeah. talent. Uh, Which was fantastic. It, I loved it. See, I enjoyed Renfield more than than that one. Yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 like, um, <laughs> I liked Pedro in the movie and stuff. I just thought it could have been written a little stronger. It, it was a lot of fun, but, like, it wasn't as fun as Renfield, in my opinion. Mm. No. Yeah, I enjoyed Renfield a lot more than that one. But and Nicholas Cage know. is coming to Dead by Daylight next or in July, which is fantastic. that's true. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. I am a little concerned that he's gonna wear out. Like once he knows he's meta, it's not meta anymore, and it's not fun. So like, I mm. hope it, this doesn't like wear it out to where it's like <sighs> get out. Like okay, we get the shtick. Like I, I like I hope it still feels like 
funny and like you know like oh he's not in on it <laughs> you know what I mean right because <clears throat> he's he's played it off pretty well even doing the unbearable weight I feel like he's kind of played off this whole persona where it's like he's he doesn't know how self-aware or not self-aware mm-hmm. he is and so I hope that this isn't like <clears throat> a new era of it just being Nicolas Cage Nicolas Cage because it's gonna like wear off the charm <laughs> Well, he did uh, all his versions in this film, so... Mm. Except for maybe... Did he channel Pig a little bit? Not really. No. 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 But his more eccentric characters pretty much yeah. showed up in it quite a bit. Like, he's capable of doing it. Like, look at Pig. Like, he's capable... He's got range. If you mm-hmm. allow him to, give him the proper role. I mean... Or you I can feel like he him... picks his roles though, so it's like I feel like he wants to be silly, goofy, Nicky, you know? Like, yeah. He, he yeah. I feel like I, you know what? I feel like at his like his point in his career, maybe it's easier for him to take on roles that don't take themselves too seriously mm-hmm. because he already knows he was like the butt of the industry at some point. So All it's right. like less pressure to perform when it's kind of fun. But it's it's interesting because so many people become end up there right Mm -hmm. and it's nice to see that he's made it through and now he's actually back in the limelight of hollywood and making some fun movies because when when he's at his best i mean he's so fun to watch and Mm -hmm. it's nice to see him back back in in that yeah yeah Yeah. because he's been like kind of back for a while but like in an Mm -hmm. underground sense but like this kind of heralds like there might be like a bigger comeback for him, which mm-hmm. could be fun. I mean, like, look what happened with Jeff Goldblum a couple years ago, and like he got to ride that out really well and wear cat mm-hmm. sweaters on Facebook and shit. So like, <laughs> I'm hoping he'll take like that off too. Yeah, doing apartments dot com. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I can't recommend Renfield highly enough personally. Um, I guess it does kind of like have a weird storyline that you wouldn't expect with the mobsters, but yeah. I, I kind of thought it was fun, even though it was No, I like I, I definitely think I need to rewatch it and, and see if my opinion changes because I think it just, it surprised me it took me by surprise, I was like, what is this? This is not what I signed up for Yeah, because wow. it was probably I feel like there hasn't been like a lot of like proper comedies that have come out lately Mm-hmm. And this was, like, advertised, like, uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but more... I feel like it seemed more dramatic than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And then after watching it, I'm like, this is the funniest thing I've seen all year. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and it was more more focused on Nic- Nicholas Holt than Nicholas Cage. Right. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Cage is, like, a supporting actor in this. <clears throat> he has yeah. more of a supporting role than the main role. So it's mm-hmm. interesting to see him take on this role as he's rising to be more like take a back seat a little bit and let like like Aquafina and Nicholas Holt I think had yeah. way more screen time than uh, Nicholas Cage did so and even no. uh Lobos like Ben Schwartz like yeah. as soon as I saw he was in it I should have known that it was gonna be very serious mm-hmm. Aquafina I feel has a little bit more range already to where I, I could have gone either way with it but as soon as I saw him, because I didn't know he was in it, I said, this is about to be stupid. <laughs> this is about to be absolutely absurd. So, yeah, I, I'm with Johnny, too. I, it, It's a fun movie. It's, it's super fun. Don't go in there thinking it's going to be anything more than just, you know, s- some silliness, some fun campy gore, uh, some decent action scenes as well. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. over the top, but fun. Uh, yeah, man, like, you, that's what you gotta expect from this. It's, it's, it, the whole movie's yeah. over the top. Like, from, yeah, from the story to everything. It's, it's fun, though. Yeah, I, I recommend it as well. All right. Uh, we're gonna be back on Friday. We're gonna be doing our music episode. It's gonna be, um, debut albums, and we're gonna have a pretty stacked house for that episode. It's gonna be pretty fun. Um, who else is going to be on that again, Joe? We're going to have... Uh, Adrian's going to be in the house. Uh, we'll have Stillin and Max. Uh, we'll also have Becca. The Becca will be in the house with us, and we'll be talking about debut albums. Either just straight-up debut albums or major label debuts. So it depends mm-hmm. on uh, the person, what they pick, but uh, that's what we'll be talking about. 
So, oops, I did it again is going to be my... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to come and pick whatever you want. Yeah. There's no, there are no rules. There are no rules. We're not expecting... Like I said, it can be an EP or an LP. We're not going to be mm -hmm. fussy. Like, I'll count an EP as a debut album because it has, like, four to... F <laughs> like, as long as it's not a demo or a seven inch, you know, then I'll count it. So if you want to come on, man, uh, both welcome. of you, more than welcome. There's always room for more. We're also counting both um, uh, indie release and um, major label debut major label. too, because yeah. there's a lot of bands that came out and had a, a couple albums that were mm -hmm. indie that a lot of people don't know, but then broke big in the mainstream, and that's mm -hmm. how most people know them. So you can pick either of those albums. Oh, we're talking Hoobastank. We're talking. <laughs> 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 Why you laugh, Joey? You said anybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was my jam in high school. <laughs> well, yeah, then I suggest you show up on Friday and we can, yeah. we can have a discussion about it. <laughs> I want to hear all about the reason. Yeah. The reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was actually on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, actually. <laughs> actually. You'll be more than welcome on, homie. So. <laughs> all Nickelback all the time. Oof. Might get a little chuckle from me with that one if you were being serious. <laughs> I was being dead serious. <laughs> well, suspense. Will Al make an appearance or not? <laughs> Stay tuned. Friday. <laughs> the way I went through two um, Silver Side Up records. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead and All cut right, that. Well. <laughs> Alright, everyone. Have a great week. Hope to see you on Friday. And, uh, Thanks to Cookie and Elle for coming on. It's always a pleasure to have you guys on and uh, shoot this shit about movies or whatever, comics. So uh, thanks again for for joining us. You're welcome. I didn't know if that was a time to... <laughs>